So welcome guys. Um, today we're going to cover getting Panopto into uh, your Canvas. We're going to be focusing mostly on Canvas today and very little on Moodle, although I will include some Moodle instructions in the PowerPoint for those of you who want to try and use it with Moodle this semester. Um, we are going to cover today what is Panopto, just kind of an introduction as to what makes it unique as a video platform, what, what is everything that you can do with it. We're also going to be doing a brief hands-on activity where we turn Panopto on in one of your Canvas classes and explaining why Panopto and Canvas have to work hand in hand. So without further ado, first thing we're going to do is going to be in Canvas. I'm going to talk a little bit, but if you would like to follow along with the turning Panopto on portion, then make sure you load um, canvas.kvcc.edu in either Chrome or Firefox. Okay, so let's get started. What is Panopto. So this can be confusing to people at first because it actually means a few different things. So first and foremost, Panopto is a website or a plugin. So it's a place, you can think of it as like going to youtube.com. There is a Panopto website where you can go to physically upload and watch streaming video. Okay, so it's a, a home for your videos on the web. And it's also a place where students can go to actually watch your videos. It's also, however, a recording software. So separate from the website that you would visit in your browser or that you would visit through Canvas, it is a piece of software called the Panopto Recorder. And that is, as opposed to a TV, that is more like a camera. Okay, so that's kind of the metaphor. If, if the Panopto website is your television, then the Panopto recorder is your camera. You can use one or the other or both. They play very nicely together. So if you're using the Panopto recorder, it's going to play very nicely with the Panopto website. Um, but you are not forced to use all of these pieces together in order to use Panopto. Some people never use the Panopto recorder. They just use the website. Some people use the Panopto recorder and then later go and download their video from the Panopto website and host it somewhere else. Although that's doing it that way is a little bit clunky. It's also a tool to check understanding. So Panopto is designed as a video platform for teaching, learning, and sort of corporate training. So it is ad-free. So your students are not going to get all of the distractions, the sponsored content that they might get on YouTube. So if you're someone who is routinely afraid to send students out onto the World Wide Web to get distracted by cat videos, then Panopto might be something for you to use. It's also more private because students have to log in with their student ID to see your content. There's also analytics. So you can check very easily who has watched your videos and also how much of the video they have watched. Okay, so if you have a 15 minute video and you notice that everyone starts dropping off around the 10 minute mark, then you know that, hey, maybe this is a place to either change something up or to split this into two different videos, or I need to review the concepts that start at the 10 minute mark because everyone, no one watched that, so we're going to need to review that a little bit harder. Okay, so first and foremost, uh, we are going to be getting Panopto set up. And so these are kind of the getting started steps that you need to follow and you need to do them in this order. We're not going to be doing all of these during the workshop today. We're just going to be doing number one. So setting up Panopto in your learning management system. So that's either going to be Moodle or Canvas. We're only going to be focusing on Canvas today because Moodle, this is Moodle's last semester. So the reason you need to do this is because students are not going to be creating a separate Panopto account, okay? They're going to be using their normal KVCC username and password, which is super convenient because then they don't have to remember another username and password. The way that this works is that Panopto links up with Canvas, and that's how it knows that you are the teacher of this class because you're the teacher in the Canvas class. And so you should have permission to record videos that your students see. And that's how it knows that, you know, Billy is a student in your class and Susie is a student in your class. So they should have permission to watch your videos, but no other students. Okay, you can change that. So you can make videos public using Panopto, but by default, it's meant to be videos created by you, the teacher, and shown to your students. So this is why we have to set up Panopto in Canvas, even if you don't use Canvas or Moodle this semester. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to record anything. It's not going to know that you're a teacher. 
So then the next step is gonna to be to download the Panopto recorder, which is your camera, once again, that you'll be using to make your video. If you're using a KVCC issued computer and you don't have the Panopto recorder on it yet, uh, I'd encourage you to email it at kvcc.edu to get that installed. Or, you know, uh, I see Brian Groening is here, so maybe shoot him a private message as well. Uh, no, I'd say just email, email it, uh, and they'll help you get that installed. If you're on a personal computer, then you should be able to install it yourself. Note that we've had some confusion in the past where the instructions for installing and using the recorder are slightly different if you are on a Mac versus on a Windows. So all of the steps that I'm going through are gonna be uh, Windows-based because that's what I'm using. However, if you do a quick search and add you know, Mac <laughs> in, in your search, you should be able to find the differences between Windows and Mac. They're very, very similar, but it does cause some confusion. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna be doing is adding Panopto to Canvas. So if you are gonna be working alongside me, let me do a new share real quick so you can see my entire screen. And so I have, I'm in my Canvas course and this is just a Panopto sample course. It's a sandbox that I have created specifically for this workshop. What I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna open up my course, so I'm inside it. I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna scroll down and on the left-hand side, I'm looking for this link that says settings. And I'm gonna click on settings. Now I'm in the settings page and I want to make sure that I am on this navigation tab. This navigation tab in Canvas is going to determine as you can kind of see, I've got my home, home, announcements, announcements. This determines what appears in my Canvas course on the left-hand side. And this is also going to be the way, if you've taken Canvas uh, level two, then you'd be a little bit familiar with this. Um, some of the Canvas basics training went over this. This is how you're also going to turn on third-party plugins to Canvas. And everything that is up here at the top is gonna be visible to uh, students, and everything that is down here at the bottom is going to be hidden. So we've got a lot of sort of hidden third-party tools here. We've got Panopto, iClicker, Test Out, et cetera. And we wanna take this Panopto video, and we're literally just going to click and drag, and I'm just gonna drag it all the way up here, and I'm gonna put it somewhere up here at the top, kind of near the top so that I can see it. Oops, didn't stick. Let's try that again. There we go. Okay, so now I have Panopto up video up here at the top where it's gonna be visible. And now I, very importantly, need to remember to save because I can't tell you the number of times I've done this and forgotten to hit the save button and it, I had to go back and do it again. So save button is gonna be all the way down at the bottom. And then finally, now you can see Panopto video appears over here on the left. I am just going to click on that. And Panopto is going to, in Moodle, this was called provisioning a course, okay? So Panopto and Canvas are basically going to have a conversation and Canvas is going to ask nicely for Panopto to create a class folder for it and to make you uh, the creator within that folder and to make all of your students viewers. Okay, and just, to, just so you can see, there is a 30 second YouTube video here that's gonna be linked in this PowerPoint on how to do this in Moodle if you are going to attempt to use Panopto with Moodle this semester. Uh, as a reminder, obviously Moodle is going away after this semester, so we're not gonna spend any time on it. Okay, so the next step I wanna show you is how to upload content from, I'm sorry, let me go back real quick. Um, okay, is how to upload content that you've already created and everything, whether you're recording or whether you're uploading content that exists already, you're going to be doing everything through this create button, which you should see on the Canvas page. So the, if you are using Panopto simply as a way to share video with your students and you're not planning on using the recorder for anything, then this is the main way that you would be using Panopto. You're gonna use this create button, you're gonna click upload media, and you're going to either click and drag your video file, so like your MP4 or whatever video file that you're using, you're gonna click and drag it, and or you're going to click on the box and open up your file. So basically, I'm gonna hit this create button, I'm going to see, I'm gonna go down here to upload media, 
and it's going to offer me the opportunity to either click and drag video right here or just to click and then it's going to open up my file explorer and I can choose to upload a video from here. So this is why you can use Panopto in conjunction with your favorite video creation software, whether you're using Snagit, Camtasia, I don't know, iMovie, anything else, uh, you can use Panopto as a way to get your videos into your Canvas course for your students as, for example, an alternative to YouTube or Vimeo or one of those. If you most, I don't I would say most people who are currently using Panopto at KVCC, although don't quote me, they also use the Panopto recorder because they're using it to record lectures and the two play very nicely together. Uh, so we'll be covering that next. The next thing I want to show you is uh, this idea that your video, we're, we're still talking about the Panopto website, okay? So remember on that first slide, we had the website, we had the camera, and we had the extra tools. We're still on number one. We're still talking about the website that students use and that you can use to watch video. So right now your videos actually have two homes on the web by doing this. Your videos live inside Canvas, obviously, because you can see uh, the Panopto video link that we just added to our Canvas course. But they also live at this website called lectures.kvcc.edu. And so this is the Panopto website that we're talking about is lectures, plural, .kvcc edu and really canvas is just a window to that website okay so you can think of it as the exact same website just living in two places you can see it through your canvas course like a window or you can directly type in lectures.kvcc.edu you can log in with your kvcc account and your videos will live in either place something important for you to know just for this semester uh, possibly into the future, although we're going to figure out how, how quickly we can fix this. You currently have a Moodle Panopto account, and you also have a Canvas. Oh, I worded this slide poorly. What it should say is that you have a Moodle Panopto account, and you also have a Canvas Panopto account. So that's just because we have two different integrations with two different learning management systems. They do not share videos, okay? So if you are a teacher and you log in to Panopto with Moodle and you create some videos and then you try to add those videos to Canvas, you're not going to, if you log in with your Canvas account, you're not going to see those videos. And so this is easily fixed. And if you need help moving videos between your two accounts, just contact myself or David. Um, it's a quick fix. It just freaks some people out because you create all these videos and then you go to log in and you can't find where they went. This is also important to know because your students have a Moodle account and they have a Panopto account at the moment. So sometimes if they have Panopto videos from their Moodle and uh, from their instructors who are using Moodle and they have Panopto videos from their instructors who are using Canvas, sometimes they'll go in and it'll, it'll tell them that they can't see, they have to request access to your videos because you're using Canvas and they're logged in with Moodle and Panopto remembers whichever one they logged in with last. So if you're getting a ton of students requesting access, uh, let me know and again, I can set it up so that uh, those students who have Moodle accounts also have access to your Canvas course. This is The good news is that this is a problem with an end date. <laughs> as soon as Moodle goes away, uh, Panopto has told us that they can merge everyone's accounts. So you'll just have one account to, to deal with and this is only going to be a headache for one more semester. So that's, that's good to know. Okay, so we have talked about setting up Panopto in Canvas and a little bit about the Panopto website. Now we're gonna move on to that second part. We're gonna move away from the, the television in my metaphor and we're gonna move into using the actual camera. So completely separate piece of equipment but they do talk to one another. We're gonna be using the Panopto recorder and this is what the Panopto recorder looks like. I'm gonna show you, uh, first of all, hands on from within my Canvas course. So again, um, let's go back to the front page of my Canvas course. So I log in to Canvas. I can see over here on the left that I've added Panopto. I click on that and I get this blue create button that appears right here because I am the teacher with creator access. If you go directly to lectures.kvcc.edu, which I can just type that in, lectures.kvcc.edu, I will also find 
a blue create button up here. So this is the Panopto website. And this is the Panopto website as seen through my Canvas class. So uh, either way, you're going to get this blue create button. I recommend doing this through your Canvas course if you're creating videos that are meant for your Canvas students to see. I would just do it all through Canvas. So from here, we're going to click the create button. And we saw how to upload videos that already exist. But now we want to create something new. And we want to create something with the Panopto recorder. But uh, if you do not have the Panopto recorder, this is where it's going to prompt you to download it and install it on your computer. If you have your own personal computer, then you can do this yourself. Uh, if you are using a KVCC issued computer, then you can see here I've got the installation options. I would use uh, you know, 64-bit Windows for my computer. If you're using a Mac, then you can install it from here. So if this does not work for you, let me show you the workaround. You'd want to go directly to open up a new tab and type in lectures, plural, .kvcc.edu. And if you are logged in, if you're logged into Canvas as a teacher, it should notice that and have you logged in already. And you should have, if you are a, if you are a teacher on the course where you turned Panopto on, you should have this download Panopto link up here at the top. If you don't have that link, usually it's because you have not added Panopto to either a, to, to one of your Canvas courses. If you don't have access to install things on your KVCC issued computer, then go ahead and email it at kvcc.edu. So what happens when I click create and I click record, I already have my recorder installed. Chrome asks me, hey, we noticed that you're trying to open something. Do you want to do that? And I'm going to say, yep, I want to open the Panopto recorder. And that is going to open the recorder from my computer. Now, whoop, there we go. And I guess there's my face. Um, so what we're going to be doing, I'm going to turn that off just because who likes their face on webcam and also it's distracting. <laughs> um, so another way that you could open this recorder, so this is a separate piece of software on my computer. You could also just go into your computer. And I'm going to search for Panopto. And here you can see the Panopto app. This will open the recorder as well. So I'm in my Canvas course. I've hit this Create button, and I've hit Record a New Session. It's prompted me to open the Panopto recorder. And now I get this thing, this thingamajig. So I've kind of broken this down into sections. Yours, if you're using a Mac, it's going to look a little bit different. So first and foremost, uh, up here under A, we have the folder dropdown. So I keep using this word folder. Panopto works like it's a series of folders. And whatever, if you're familiar at all with cloud sharing applications like maybe Microsoft 365, especially Google Drive, you would know that you can share things by folder. So basically anything that you put in the folder is going to give certain people permission to see it. And in this case, permission to see it is gonna be given to your students. So what Panopto does is it creates a folder for each one of your classes. And then by recording stuff into that folder, by dropping videos into your class folder on the Panopto website side, it gives your students automatic access to see your videos. So we have a lot of instructors who use this for live in the class lecture. The benefit of doing this for synchronous lecture is that you turn this on, you point it at your class folder, or you make sure that it's pointing there already, you hit record, you lecture, you hit stop, it automatically uploads and boom, everyone in your Canvas class, as soon as it's done processing, they already have access to see the lecture that they can go back and rewatch or maybe that they uh, had to miss that day. So it's a little bit like recording your Zoom lecture, for example, and then giving students a link to see it, except that it's all nicely tied in with your Canvas class. So they already have access as soon as you're done. So first and foremost, you can see the folder up here that we're gonna be recording to. And then we're going to give the recording a name. By default, it just names your video the date and the time that you started recording. But you can change that to, so let me pull up 
Panopto, so I could change this. You can see my Panopto sample course is the name of my class folder. And I can change this name to Panopto sample recording one. You could say, you know, chapter one video, oh, chapter two video, apparently, chapter two video, lect you know, week one lecture, you know, whatever you want to give a name to your video, you can just do it that way. Okay, so then the next thing we're going to do, we figured out where it's going to live and what it's named. We're going to go down here on the left hand side and we're going to look at our video and audio sources. So that is what is controlled by this box right here, your primary sources. As you can see, as I'm talking, this microphone uh, uh, scale, I guess, can't think of a good word for it, <laughs> um, is it's jumping around. So it is telling me the level of my volume as I'm talking right now. If I think this is too quiet, I can drag this little slider up. And as you can see, my voice is getting louder and louder and louder. And now it's getting into the red and the yellow because I have decided to make my microphone more sensitive. If I think that that's overwhelming, I can drag this down a little bit and I can control the level of my volume that way. You always, before you want to start recording, especially if you're going to do a nice long lecture, you always want to double check, you know, say testing, testing, one, two, three, and double check to see that this uh, volume level jumps up and down. The last thing, <laughs> sort of the most demoralizing thing is to complete a recording and then realize that none of the audio was captured. So this is one of the downsides of Panopto is that you need to have a microphone of some kind in order for it to work. Okay, so if you are just trying to record a silent screen capture, Panopto is not going to be your best option because it does not let you record without, without a microphone. So we can demonstrate that. You can use these dropdowns to determine which, which video source you want and which audio source you want. So notice that I set video to none. I could bring that back up to my webcam and you would see my face again. Hi. Um, or I can set that to none. With audio, I have this set to my webcam microphone. I have a separate webcam mic that I use just for this because the laptop microphone is a little bit close to my fan and it tends to sound like someone's vacuuming <laughs> when I use my laptop microphone. So I use a webcam specifically just to be my microphone. But if I turn that off, I set that to none, it's not gonna let me record. See, my, my record button gets grayed out. So you have to have some kind of audio source in order to record with Panopto. Then if I go down here to quality, I can set what quality I want my video to be. Uh, if you're worried about quality, you can set it to ultra because we don't really pay for storage space. We pay for watching uh, bandwidth or I don't know the technical term for that. Um, we pay by students watching your videos, not by storing your videos. I'm just going to hit standard. And now I want to decide this right here, capture computer audio. So basically what this is going to do is if you've ever had, um, if you've ever done this in Zoom where you've given a lecture and or a meeting and you played something on your computer that you wanted people to hear and people said, oh, we can't, we can't hear it. Uh, you ha probably had to go into your sharing settings and turn on this capture computer audio thing. Basically what it does is it allows anything that's going to come through your speakers to also be heard on the video. So I would keep this off unless you have a specific reason for turning it on. If you're gonna be watching a video doing some kind of animation or some kind of audio that's gonna play on your computer that you want your students to hear, then I would turn this on. Otherwise, um, you may have heard my computer kind of ding in the background. You might be getting messages from someone or you know, if you hit the wrong button and get a little error message, it's gonna bling and you don't necessarily want those distracting sounds on your video, so I would just turn that off. So to recap, what we've done so far is we have chosen the folder where we want this to live. We've given our video a name. We've come over here to test the microphone. And we've chosen from these dropdowns which devices we want our video and our audio to come from, as well as the quality of our video and whether we want our computer audio to be captured. The next options you have down here are secondary sources. And so that would be choosing whether we want to record a PowerPoint, our computer screen, or both. So if you are just gonna be lecturing over, if you're gonna be lecturing over a PowerPoint, then I recommend capturing both. Um, if you're not going to be capturing a PowerPoint, 
This option may even go away or you can just uncheck it. It doesn't hurt anything. Basically what you can do with Panopto is you can either record, so what you're seeing on your screen right now would be considered a screen recording. So what I am, anything that I do on my computer, you can see because I'm sharing my screen. So it's just like sharing your screen in Zoom. Or you can very specifically say, I want to capture just my PowerPoint slides. And the benefit of saying you want to capture PowerPoint is that Panopto will actually upload a copy of your PowerPoint presentation that students can then download. It's also going to separate out your little video chapters by slide automatically. So students will be able to see your slideshow at the bottom of their screen and click on which slide they want to jump to so that they could very easily jump to a section that they want to review. So I would then say, if this is going to be a webcast, we're not covering how to do webcasts with Panopto today, but know that there is an option to do webcasts and broadcast your Panopto live. And then finally, we're just going to hit record. So let's do a quick sample recording. Got my video. I've got my audio all set up. Uh, I have two screens, so I can capture my second screen if I wanted to. I'm not going to be doing that. If you have, for example, a... A, an extra camera source. So if you have maybe like an, a little document camera or something you're going to be using, you could try adding another video source and record what's going on on that document camera. If you get that to work successfully, please let me and David know. Uh, we, would, we would love to hear that and hear what brand of document camera you're using because that's information that we will happily uh, pass on to people. Okay, so I'm going to hit record. And this is going to capture both my screen and my PowerPoint. And we're going to pull up this Panopto presentation. And so this is my sample presentation. And so I would just go through these slides. Oops. Sorry, guys. What's happening is that it's pulling up my PowerPoint presentation on the other screen. And I want you guys to be able to see it. So I guess we're not going to be doing it that way. Um, we'll just pretend that I'm presenting. So I would just go through this PowerPoint. So intro to Panopto. What are things that you can do with Panopto as a student? So you can search every word in the PowerPoint and every spoken word in the video. Uh, as a student, I can speed up, slow down, and turn on captions for better comprehension. And I can add personal bookmarks, notes, or start public discussions with the instructor and with other students. Okay, that's good enough. So that was my sample video. I'm going to go back to Panopto, and I'm going to stop recording. And it's going to give me an option to, again, rename my recording or add a description if I would like. That's totally optional. I'm going to hit Done. And notice it is immediately going to start uploading. Oop, there we go. It is uploading my uh, Panopto recording. And there we go. It has uploaded. And now as soon as that is done processing, because I selected my Canvas folder and we can see, right now it says there are no videos. I'm going to hit refresh, and you're going to be able to see. Oop, there we go. There's the Panopto sample recording that I just made. So I created it using the camera, using the uh, Panopto recorder, and it has automatically sent that to the Panopto website and to my Canvas course. It's going to take a little bit to process, so I'm going to head back to my PowerPoint and talk a little bit about while that's processing, uh, what tools might you need or could you use to with Panopto to make these videos? So first and foremost, you're going to need a microphone, and that is required in order to use Panopto. If you want to take silent screen recordings, so sometimes I send you guys videos, you ask me how to do something, and uh, David or I show you, we record a little video and show you how to do it. Mine, I mostly don't put any kind of sound on my videos, I'm using Snagit to do that. So if you're interested in just sort of quick, silent screen recordings, then you would definitely want something like Snagit. Um, for Panopto, you're going to need a microphone. And you can use a webcam as your microphone, even if you're not planning on using the video. You may want some kind of camera. So if I put my, if I decided to record my face, um, there are sort of different studies on that. It would certainly help someone who is hard of hearing and deaf or hard of hearing and wants to read lips. Uh, they could just read your lips on the video. 
it also helps create a sense of you being a real person and teaching to your students as if you're actually standing there lecturing. So if you can stand to put your face on the video, uh, I, would, I would say consider doing that. No one likes it. Uh, I'm going to be upfront about that. No one enjoys having themselves on webcam while they're lecturing, but uh, it, it may help your students feel a little bit more connected to you as the instructor. For screen recordings, you're going to be recording either your desktop, your laptop, your iPad or your tablet, and you may want a stylus. So if you, rec you can record uh, what's going on on your tablet, then you could use a stylus to sort of do digital whiteboarding. And you may want to use additional software. So PowerPoint is gonna be the most obvious one and probably the most integrated with uh, Panopto. You can record right over your PowerPoint, and again, it's going to make those PowerPoint slides searchable for your students. So they can actually search the words on your PowerPoint slides. But if you are a fan of either Snagit or Camtasia, Snagit maybe because it has a lower learning curve, Camtasia because it has more editing features and is a fancier editor that, and you like, you like doing more um, advanced editing, then you could create your video somewhere in, like in Snagit or Camtasia and then upload it. So these are some things you might wanna consider acquiring or learning to use. Okay, so watching our videos in Canvas. So let's see, aha, so this has now processed. We can see the, the uh, preview of your PowerPoint slide here on your video. So now we wanna talk about how are my students actually going to get at my videos? How are they actually going to access my videos? Now, I know they're in my Canvas class, but how do I, how do I get my students to watch them? And what's, what are the best practices there? So the easiest way, uh, is simply, if I go back to the home page of my course, the easiest way and sort of the one that requires the least effort on your part is to just tell students to go watch the videos in this Panopto video link. So they can click here and this will load and they will have access to all of the, vid all of the Panopto videos that you either record or upload for your class. The downside of that is that all your videos are just kind of dumped into this folder. Um, they can sort by like date or by name, but it's, it's not great if you're teaching, especially if you're teaching a fully online or a blended synchronous class. Um, it, it's better to have your videos sort of organized week by week or chapter by chapter or module by module. So the first way that we're gonna do that is, and if you'd like to follow along, you're welcome to, I'm gonna to head to my homepage for my, uh, sorry, not my Moodle course, my Canvas course. And I'm actually going to embed that video right in the middle of one of my modules. So I'm actually gonna, you can see I have my class organized. I've got start here, I've got my module one, my module one resources and activities and then I've got some resources for me as the instructor. And theoretically, I would repeat this, uh, this formula for module two, module three, module four. I would have resources and activities. You're probably familiar with this if you took a Canvas Basics or Canvas Level Two. So I'm gonna put this in my, I'm gonna put this in a page. So I've got a page already here at the top, so I could just, I could put it in this start here page, I could put it in this module one page. I'm actually gonna create a new page just so that you can see how that's done. I'm gonna hit this plus sign inside my module one because I wanna create a module one page. Um, if David's uh, metaphor for modules in Canvas, if you're not familiar with it, is that if a Canvas course is your house, a module is like a room, and then these items inside your module are like furniture. So we're gonna put some we're gonna put some furniture in our module one room. And the furniture in this case is gonna be a page. So I'm gonna hit this plus sign to start adding things to my module. And I'm going to from this drop down select page. Note that this will work for any of these other items. So if you want to put your video, embed your video in an assignment. So maybe uh, just to give you some scenarios, let's say you want to create an assignment that students are gonna turn in online. And you wanna create a quick video of you explaining either, you know, you could talk through the software that students are supposed to use. So let's say, I don't know, you want students to submit an Excel file, and so you want to record yourself actually clicking through the Excel file and explaining what all of the different columns, all of the different spreadsheets are for. You could embed your video at the top of an assignment. 
you could embed your video at the top of a discussion, and you could actually make that part of your discussion as you uh, talking through Panopto. Um, I'm just going to be putting it on a page because it's meant to be more of just a lecture that I want students to watch. So I'm going to click page. I'm going to create a new page. And then I'm going to give it a name. So let's say module one lecture. And then I would give it, a, I, would, I would put a topic name here. So like intro to Panopto. And then I'm going to hit the blue add item button at the bottom. Now, in order to actually put stuff in my page, I'm going to click into it. And now I'm going to go up here to the top right and I'm going to click edit. So if you've taken Canvas Basics before, you may be familiar with this big text box area. This is called the Rich Content Editor. And I say that because if it ever gets updates or if, it, if you read any Canvas help documentation, it's going to call this area the Rich Content Editor or the RCE. So I want you to be familiar with that term in Canvas. This, it's basically just a text box that you can use where you can change the font size, the color, and you can embed links, videos, documents, that kind of stuff. That's the rich content editor. Uh, if you took Canvas Basics, you saw that you can embed YouTube videos or Vimeo videos. I'm now gonna show you the Panopto side to that. So let's say that I'm going to embed my module one lecture, which is my intro to Panopto. I'm gonna click on this little downward facing arrow or this little V icon that says more external tools and I'm gonna click on Panopto video. Now, just as a heads up, this rich content editor is going to change. It is, there is a new rich content editor that it's gonna be replaced with, and then the process for finding this Panopto video link will change. Uh, if we reach that point and I still have this recording on YouTube, then look in the links in the description or in the PowerPoint for the new instructions for finding this Panopto video link. But it should be, it should be fairly straightforward. So I'm gonna click on Panopto video, and it is going to detect the folder for my Canvas class automatically, and boom, you can see it's already right there, ready to go. All I have to do is click on it, and I can hit insert, and let's see, there we go, boom. It is in there, and all of my students in this class have access to watch it, so I can just hit uh, save, or I can hit save and publish if I'm ready for my students to see it. And there we have it. We have my intro to Panopto, lecture one, and it is also living on my homepage inside of my module one. I would probably click and drag this somewhere that I want it to go. So students get here, they reach, they start here, they come down to module one, they read through the overview, they watch the lecture, they read this article, and they don't have to go searching for my video. It is it is nice and consistent and just sort of in the middle of everything else that they're going to watch. Um, quick pro tip, if you're teaching fully online or, you know, blended synchronous classes, having that consistency and that organized structure is going to be really key for replacing the structure that's kind of lost when your students don't have to come to campus between, you know, 3 and 4.50 on Monday and Wednesday. So I, re I definitely recommend inserting your videos in the middle of these modules when you're using Canvas. Uh, okay, so I've got uh, explanations for that. And um, you can, another way to do it is to have a, a video quiz assignment. There are instructions on how to do that. I'm just going to kind of explain that it exists. Um, I'm not going to go through how to do it, but you have the ability in Panopto to create a quiz that your students can take in the middle of the video or at the end of the video, and it can go, the results of that can actually go into the uh, Canvas gradebook. So there's instructions in this PowerPoint for how to do that if you're interested. And I have instructions for Moodle if you need them, but I'm just going to, we're going to go past that. So editing, we're not gonna have a ton of time to get into editing, but I did include a video playlist that shows you all of the different ways, step-by-step. Step. Uh, this, is, this is a how-to playlist from Panopto, how to use the Panopto editor. If you're looking for sort of hardcore editing features, 
Panopto is not going to be your best option. If you want to really get into editing with also kind of a higher learning curve, I'd recommend Camtasia. The Panopto editor is a little bit buggy and difficult to use in my experience. That said, I haven't, I haven't tried to use it for any extreme editing, at least within the last year or so. So, and it is always improving, but I would not use Panopto mainly as an editor. Uh, I don't think it's, it's the greatest for that. That said, what you can do is let's say you swear or you make a mistake or you have a coughing fit or you just want to trim, you know, the beginning and the end of your video, you can very easily do that from Panopto. So trimming is definitely one of those things that Panopto does pretty well. So in order to actually edit our video, I'm going to go back to Canvas and I'm going to go back into my Panopto video tab. And this won't work until after the video is done processing. Okay, so if, if you're trying this and it's not working, it's probably because you need to wait for your video to finish processing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hover over this video and I'm going to get these options right here. And notice that any of the options I have for one individual video, I have the same options up here in the top right and this is going to apply to everything in the folder. Okay, so if I have down here, I have edit, um, well, I can't really edit a folder, but <laughs> so you can edit a video, you can't really edit a folder. But I do have settings down here for the individual video, and I also have settings for the folder. I have sharing, so I can share an individual video, and I also have sharing settings for the whole folder. Okay, so I have stats, so here's my analytics down here, and I've got analytics for the entire folder. So that's just a helpful thing to know. I'm going to briefly go through sort of what each of these things does. Um, we're going to start with edit. So clicking here takes you into the video editor. It's going to open up in a new tab for me. And before we get into that, I guess, let me just show you what this video looks like while it's playing. So for a student who's watching this video, i going to turn off the volume, um, this is what they're going to be seeing. So they can see the screen recording here that I just took, and they can see the individual PowerPoint slides. So I've got my PowerPoint slide down here, and I could actually click through these slides to get to a different point in the video. Over here at the bottom of the screen, they can change the speed of your video. So if they want to watch it faster because they're just trying to get through it, <laughs> or they can slow it down if they really need to go over a concept again very slowly, they can do that. Um, they can jump back 10 seconds, and they can also you know, collapse this and watch this full screen. Over here on the left, they, there's a table of contents here, which is going to be created based on your PowerPoint, or you have the ability to create your own table of contents. Discussion, they can uh, start, com you know, they can put comments on here and start a discussion. You have the ability to turn that off if you don't like it, but they can start a discussion. They can take notes for themselves and they, or make them public, and they can also bookmark. So this is really cool. If they make a bookmark, let's say that they search your video for every time you said um, endoplasmic reticulum. <laughs> for example, and they search that and they find, you know, because that's a, that's a concept they really need to review, they can bookmark it and then they can access all of their bookmarks from a across all of their classes all at the same time. So they have a handy list of everything that they need to sort of revisit across all of their classes in Panopto all in the same place. So that's a really, a really useful tool. Um, when I explained Panopto to some students, they were, they were kind of excited about that. Um, okay, so on the editing page, so we came over here, we clicked on this editing button, that brings us to this page, and you can tell it's the editing page because we've got a, we've got our editing timeline down here. Uh, the only thing I'm going to show you how to do today is how to cut stuff out because it is so gosh darn easy. Uh, the, the cutting tool is already turned on by default, you don't have to do anything. All you need to do is click, so let's find the spot that I want to edit out, so let's say like, this part where I'm like switching, switching between screens I don't like. So here's my, here's my red line where my, where my video is right now. All I need to do, you can do this anywhere, but it helps to start at the red line. All I'm going to do is click and drag and boom. Everything that is gray is now not going to be shown. Okay, so this gray area, I didn't actually delete anything. That's the cool part is you can always go back and you can always undo and you can remove um, your cuts after you've done them. I'm not deleting anything, I'm just skipping it. So watch if I, if I cut out this section. You can do it to individual areas too. So if I just wanna cut out, I can cut out all three or I can cut out just the PowerPoint. Um, 
I guess the only one I can, some of these will let you do individually, some of them won't. Um, and if I wanna get rid of these cuts, notice I can just click and drag to make it longer, or I can click and drag to make it shorter until it disappears. So um, if I click, let's say, oops, so let's say I want to cut out this section here. Notice that when I play, the thing is that it's pulling up my PowerPoint presentation on the other screen that I'm presenting. Oops. It just jumped right over that section. So that is how I cut stuff out. Make sure that you hit this, this blue apply button at the top because that's how you're going to save your changes. And if you don't want to save any of your changes, you want to, you were just playing around and you want to go back to what the video was like when you last saved it, you can hit revert and it's going to just undo all of the edits that you did. So I'm going to hit apply, and when I hit apply, it's going to, it's going to have to reprocess. So you're going to lose access to it for a little bit while it reprocesses your new, your new video with your new edits. So I'm actually not going to do that. I'm just going to close this. Um, okay, running out of time, the last few things I just want to cover very quickly. So that's how you remove content that you don't want. Um, you can import automatic captions from this uh, captions tab in the editor, which I would definitely recommend doing. If you use, if, if you know how to download captions from like YouTube, for example, you can also import your own captions if you have um, better ones. Uh, definitely make sure that you edit your captions for accuracy because the, the machine generated captions are not, not necessarily all that great. Uh, settings and sharing. Um, notice that in on this page, I have the settings option here and I have the settings cog up here. What you can do, that's gonna bring up your settings and basically that's going to allow you to do, you, you have all these different options for changing settings. Um, probably the most common thing that you would do from the settings page, honestly, is change the name of your video. So you can hit settings and you can edit uh, the title of your video if you wanna do that. You could also add a description, for example. Sharing, so clicking the sharing button is going to let you change your audience for the video. So you could invite individual video, or sorry, individual people to come and watch your video if you would like. You can also make your video public on the web, visible to anyone who has the link, whether or not they, are, they have a KVCC login. So that would be if you want to share something a little bit more publicly. You can also make it visible to anyone at your organization. Now I caution you on this because if you do this, it's going to appear on the Panopto homepage for anyone with a KVCC username and password. So students, faculty, you know, your peers will be able to see it at the Panopto website if you use this sharing option. And then here we have anyone at your organization with the link. So basically, if I wanted to share my video with, um, you know, someone in a different class or whatever, but I still want, it, want to have the privacy of people being required to log in with their KVCC username and password, then I could use this uh, anyone with the link at your organization. Okay, we are officially out of time. I just wanna uh, let you know that I'm gonna be putting a bunch of resources from the Panopto video tutorial library from our own YouTube channel. We have, um, this is gonna be posted on our KVCC YouTube channel, which I encourage you to go and check out if you have not done so yet. Um, and I've also got some, I've got some video tips and best practices in here, plus some bonus, uh, some links to some bonus tips if you wanna be a more advanced user, such as uh, adding content into your timeline, like YouTube videos or quizzes, uh, and how to do step-by-step -step the um, video quiz assignment in Panopto. But otherwise, um, that is all I've got for you guys today. And I'll stick around for a little bit to answer some questions. And thanks for being here, guys.